Kyle says, I'm about to turn 30. Do you think it's worth buying term or whole life insurance? Or do I not need life insurance at this time at all? So there's two questions here, Bron. When <laughs> more, yeah. does it make sense to buy insurance? Do I need life insurance? Who needs life insurance? And then the second question is, okay, I need to buy it. What kind do I buy? Do I go get term? Or again, I find all this fantastic information on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, all of those. I should probably get some whole life because I hear that's the way to really build wealth. Yeah, I mean, this is a very individualized question, but I can tell you for most people, I'm going to talk in most people terms, Kyle, your situation might be a little different. We'll give you some indicators of that. But for a lot of people, you're just trying to ensure a need that you have. You know, if you, if you passed away tomorrow, is there somebody that would be left in a really bad situation? So if you have a spouse, if you have children, um, that could be pretty catastrophic yep. because but even if you um, have a great cr- career trajectory and a lot of opportunity in the future, that's even worse because you, you're in a situation where um, you, you leaving the planet early um, really is catastrophic. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case when this is something you're saving diligently in the background and that, that concern or that risk is going to go away in 20, 25 years as you're building your path to financial independence – that's that's perfect for term insurance, mm-hmm. and that's what the majority of people you think. I, I think about every one of my own personal sh- situation. Every time I had um a, 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 my daughter born, one of my daughters born, I bought more life insurance, and then as um I had different life events happen, I added another. I mm-hmm. essentially created my own laddered term yep. life insurance situation so that it timed out to when, as kids left the house, you know, fu- fully educated. Um, hopefully that, that that wouldn't no longer need it as my financial independence for my wife, you know, from needing money for for the household would be taken care of. It's going to fall off at, at its appropriate time. That is all indicators of term. Whole life or permanent insurance, because there are many versions, there's actually several versions of permanent insurance. I have actually recommended that for clients. I had clients who had big estate planning issues. They needed protection immediately um, because if they had passed away, and all their illiquid assets like real estate, mm-hmm. multi, you know, eight figure um, real estate purchase, you know, assets that they couldn't sell quickly that were very valuable. They needed something almost mm-hmm. instantly. That made sense um, to for, for something more permanent. If you have health concerns, you know, maybe you have underwriting, you're very healthy now, but you know there's a lot of family history and other things, that type of stuff might come into mm-hmm. play. But don't get sold something. I want you to actually go through the process of doing the due diligence on what are the needs, what is your personal situation, and then making sure that intersects with everything that you're trying to implement. Because if you do everything based upon what's being sold to you, the fear, that's probably not going to work out well. Yeah, I think a lot of financial mutants, we think through, you know, if you think about financial planning as a pyramid, the very bottom of the pyramid is risk management. It's what we're all kind of taught at the beginning. And so some of us feel guilt if we don't go get injured. Hey, I'm 30 years old. I'm not, a, I'm, not, I'm not fresh out of college. Maybe I need to do this. I think it's okay to not buy insurance until you need it. Because realistically, yeah, it gets more expensive every year, but it's marginal. I mean, insurance, it's still pretty stinking cheap all the way up into your 40s. Like life insurance is not an incredibly expensive thing to get for folks that are still young. And Brian, I'm going to say still young is 50 and below. Well, you know what I mean? Uh, certainly 40 and below. I, I would actually say it's 60 and below. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, uh. It's amazing how the older you get, the, the younger, younger everybody uh, seems. seems. That's exactly <laughs> right. Uh, I don't mind sharing. The very first, you know, uh, when I started my career, didn't have life insurance. Uh, when I got married, did not have life insurance. I was working. She was working. If I got hit by a bus, she's going to be okay. She's going to marry again really, really quick. When I convinced her... Hey, you ought to move to another state where you know nobody so that we can do this crazy thing and see if this thing works. And she did it. And then we bought a house. We had a mortgage. I said, oof, okay, now maybe I need to buy some insurance. It's okay to wait until it makes sense for you to do that. Same thing as you get older, as you get into financial independence, as you start having buckets of money sitting around that you're able to live off of, you might one day arrive at the conclusion I don't, you know, I've ha- I have life insurance, but I don't, I don't really need it anymore. It, I, I'm at the point where if I were to pass away, my spouse is taken care of, my kids are taken care of, all the debts taken care of. If you're at that place, it's still okay to not have life insurance. Our view is term or insurance for life insurance in general 
should only likely be for a term. And you get to determine when that term starts and when that term stops. And if you're outside of those terms, I think it's okay. I don't think it's something everyone absolutely has to have.